In the lawless Wild West town of Deadwood, where chaos reigns, one name arises above all else, Al Swearingen. Holding power in hand, Swearingen became the legend that shaped Deadwood's destiny. In this video, we dive into the fascinating story of Al Swearingen and the mysteries of the infamous Gym Theater, a place full of temptation unlike any other. Ellis Alfred Swearingen is an American entertainment businessman and pimp in the vibrant town of Deadwood, South Dakota. At the same time, he was the owner of the Gym Theater, a notorious brothel in the late 19th century. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Swearingen and his twin brother Lemuel were born on July 8, 1845 in Oskaloosa, Iowa. Their parents are Daniel J. and Keziah Montgomery Swearingen. The eldest in the family, the twins grew up in Iowa and have a total of eight siblings. They stayed in Iowa until adulthood. Al Swearingen ventured into Deadwood, South Dakota in May of 1876. He was one of the earliest non-mining individuals to settle in the area. Within a week of arrival, Swearingen wasted no time and set up a meds makeshift discotheque. In the Black Hills Pioneers 1882 New Year's edition, describing the early history of the city, Al Swearingen was running a dance house of 30 by 150 feet in dimensions and day and night. A man had to push and crowd to get into it. Along with his wife, Nettie, Swearingen's home life in Deadwood soon became turbulent. In September, Nettie decided to leave him, eventually filing for divorce on grounds of her husband's abuse. Swearingen will marry two more times while at Deadwood. Both marriages resulted in divorce with similar allegations of abuse. Swearingen has replaced its makeshift discotheque with a permanent building known as the Cricket Saloon. Despite its small size, often referred to as a hall by the press due to its narrowness, the pub has become a popular entertainment destination. Swearingen introduced entertaining matches in a limited 5x5 space, providing enjoyment to participants, although without any rewards. The non-professionals participating in the matches were generally ordinary working miners, whom Swearingen persuaded to join. On April 7, 1877, Swearingen successfully opened the Jim Variety Theater, described as being by the Black Hills Daily Pioneer, a theater of impeccable style and sophistication, surpassing any venue of its kind on the western frontier. This theater quickly became a popular entertainment spot in the area, home to beautiful comedians, singers, and dancers. In addition to the diverse repertoire, the theater also continues to perform attractive matches to bring excitement to the audience. However, it is important to acknowledge that the gym theater is not simply an entertaining performance, but rather serves as a brothel. The establishment's notoriety stemmed from the fact that women were forced to serve and entertain wealthy men. Al Swearingen used deceptive tactics to recruit women from the eastern states, luring them with promises of luxury hotel jobs and big stage performances at his theater. However, upon arrival, these unlucky people will have to work under the infamous Swearingen or be kicked out into the streets. Forced into slavery, some women even considered taking their own lives instead of suffering such a fate. The women who remained faced a life of suffering, marked by the physical bruises and emotional pain they endured. However, the gym theater is growing stronger with many rich and attractive entertainment activities. The beautiful women quickly became the main attraction of the camp, attracting the attention and patronage of many famous citizens. Despite the complicity of so-called citizen leaders, the authorities turned a blind eye, allowing the pub to operate with impunity. The gym theater has a spacious bar area and plenty of seating that serves as a prelude to the main event. Towards the back of the building, discreetly hidden between curtains, were several small rooms 
where the gym's painted ladies would entertain their guests. Legend has it that the gym band would sing into the night from their balconies, after which glamorous women would lure potential customers inside. Once inside, the ladies will charge their customers $20 for a dance, $10 for a beer, and a substantial $10 for a bottle of wine. As for the charges for the other, it is still unknown. In addition to the many women, swearing in staff included Dan Doherty, the general manager, Johnny Burns, responsible for overseeing the women, and a security team. Unfortunately, these men, like swearing in himself, are known for their brutal treatment of the women, with physical abuse being a regular occurrence. Though originally an entertainment venue, the gym quickly became known as a violent pub, where the echoing gunshots became an all-too-familiar sound within its walls. These shots were fired not only during scuffles between drunken men, but also in amusements often aimed at the girls themselves. In one notable case, a prostitute working at the gym, known as Louisa, shot a man in the head after he brutally beat her. Incredibly, the man did not die instantly. A doctor was hastily called, who placed a probe on the man's head and was shocked to learn that he had miraculously survived the bullet. About 30 minutes later, the man died. Amidst the chaotic events taking place in the infamous theater, the whereabouts of Field Marshal Seth Bullock remains a subject of curiosity. It is said that Bullock and Swearingen reached an agreement drawing an imaginary line along Main Street. This boundary, known as the Badlands, effectively divided the town. Thereafter, Swearingen took control of the lower part of Main Street while Sheriff Bullock maintained control of its upper part. This division not only separates their spheres of influence, but also sets them apart in financial interests wherein Bullock emphasizes the general well-being of the community while swearing and focus on his lucrative projects along the lower section of the street. In the early summer of 1879, the gym theater was engulfed in flames, causing considerable damage. However, swearing and wasted no time in quickly repairing and rebuilding the facility. Just three months later, in September 1879, Tragedy struck the entire town of Deadwood when the catastrophic fire ravaged the area, consuming about 200 buildings, including the gym theater. Undeterred, Swearingen embarked on another ambitious endeavor, rebuilding the jewel from scratch. This time, the newly emerged theater is more majestic and magnificent than before. Its opening in December 1879 was met with great anticipation with the Daily Times enthusiastically calling it the most splendid theater ever to appear. The gym theater continues to thrive, raking in substantial profits nightly. On average, it grossed $5,000, with nights even surpassing $10,000, which is $300,000 in 2023. However, it didn't last long. In 1899, the gym faced its final demise, a devastating fire that left it in ruins. Swearingen's reign in Deadwood came to an end as the gym was permanently closed, severing his ties to the town for good. On October 2, 1904, an unfortunate incident happened to Lemuel, Al Swearingen's twin brother. While leaving the local butcher market, Lemuel was assaulted, receiving a severe blow to the head. The attacker tried to rob him. Lemuel was discovered the next day unconscious. Despite receiving medical attention, eight days later he passed away. Al Swearingen then left Iowa, embarking on a new journey. Less than two months later, on November 15, 1904, Al Swearingen's life came to an abrupt and tragic end. Swearingen's body was discovered on the street near his residence. Similar to his brother, Al was also brutally hit on the head by a heavy and blunt object. The circumstances surrounding his death baffled Denver police who were unable to determine for certain whether his death was an accidental incident or an intentional act of violence. Subsequent reports suggested that Swearingen died penniless while trying to hop on a freight train. 
For a deeper dive into the fascinating history of Jim Theater and the town of Deadwood, you should visit the Adams Museum at 54 Sherman Street, Deadwood, South Dakota. There will be a lot of information and beautiful pictures related to Jim Theater. The stories of famous characters around it come to life. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.